Yo, what's up guys? Vasquez66 here with another video. Today we're going to be covering in depth what happened in Tarkov TV and what we have to look forward to in the upcoming months. First and foremost, we have an updated roadmap from BSG. This roadmap is filled with lots of information of the upcoming updates for the rest of 2023. Over on the left side, in green, we have our summer updates that will be implemented before Tarkov wipes in August. Yes, you heard right. Tarkov will be wiping in August. Now, the exact day has not been revealed yet, but we do know that wipe will happen during that month. Not only do we know about the next wipe, but we've also been told about the wipe after that, which will be in December. Two wipes being confirmed in this episode of Tarkov TV was a shocker, but it definitely got me hyped about ongoing progress with BSG. Before we dive into the roadmap, I want to talk about something brand new to Tarkov, a competitive leaderboard. This Tarkov rating system will be implemented from now until next wipe, and there are many different categories to participate in, such as top KD, survival rate, kills, etc. Nikita has announced that the first place participants in either of these categories will be receiving a permanent buff, which will extend your stash space by two extra rows. The link to this Tarkov rating system will be linked in the description below, and let me know in the comments if you are going to be trying out for any of these categories. As for some things showcased from the roadmap, we saw helmet flashlight toggling, limb selection for healing, double clicking to use consumables, which works with both rations and healing, a sell all function, which you will sell all your gear from your scav to fence, an updated crafting status indicator. So now it's going to be a green icon instead of the glowing or blinking white icon. It's going to be a little bit easier to see. It's a nice quality of life thing for the hideout. And also a user interface overhaul, which is not only for buying from and selling to traders, but you can now switch between traders without having to press escape, which hopefully this overhaul will also come with an expandable sell table so you don't have to sell all your stuff in badges. Along with the UI changes, Nikita did mention something regarding Lightkeeper which he will actually sell you useful and unique items. So he won't just be a taskmonger anymore. That is really interesting. Now, this is something I know everyone has been waiting for. We also got a showcase of not only new, but also some remodeled guns. Starting off with the AK-12, a 545 caliber weapon that swaps between single, burst, and fully automatic. Next, we have the SVT and AVT-40. Two 7.62x54R caliber weapons, which are similar, but the SVT is limited to single fire, whereas the AVT is fully automatic. We also are getting a sawed off MP-43 shotgun, which is nicknamed Rizzy's Dad Obras. Now, before we get into the final new weapon reveal, we'll quickly touch base on the remodeled guns, which are the PB, PM, and PM threaded pistols. Not the most exciting thing, but I will admit they do look pretty snazzy. Now, for the piece de resistance, the PKM light machine gun. This belt-fed monster will be shooting 7.62x54R and has been confirmed to be a boss weapon. At the moment, they have not completed sound files for this weapon, but rest assured that this gun will sing like a beauty. One thing that was also showcased regarding weapons was the ability to quick swap to your sidearm. No longer will it take four years to bring out your pistol in the case of a primary weapon jam. I don't know how well this system will work, truly, but you never know when a sidearm might save you from a pesky AI scav. Along with the new weapons, a completely revamped armor and hitbox system will be implemented with the August patch. This patch will introduce armor platings that will have different gradings, 
and you can replace each individual one based on where you receive damage. Some examples are the slick will have vulnerabilities at the stomach, flank, and neck regions, whereas Thor or Zabralo will cover your entire torso, shoulders, neck, and abdomen. And yes, I am mentioning neck because the neck will be a new part of the hitboxes being implemented. As to how these armor platings are obtained, that has not been discussed, but having this knowledge is good in order to mentally prepare yourself for the possible complexity of next white. One thing that should definitely help with the complexity of the new armor system will be the loadout presets that are being introduced. BSG played a short skit showcasing this system, but its user interface has not been fully leaked, so be on the lookout for snippets of that to come. After Nikita revealed everything he has prepared for the episode, some Q&A with chat was held. A few questions and answers were as followed. Will left shoulder firing be a thing? Yes. Will the flickering shadows and models be fixed? Yes. These issues have already been addressed and solved through Unity. Will Tarkov ever be released on Steam? Yes, that is the plan with the full release of Tarkov. And finally, how close is Arena? The answer being really close. And realistically, there were so many questions that I wouldn't be able to fit all of them in just one video. The Twitch VOD is there at Battlestate Games Twitch channel for everyone to view if you all would like to review all the questions asked. If you made it this far in the video, thumbs up to you. And if you like the content, make sure you scroll down, hit the subscribe button, drop a like, and leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite part of this video is and if there's any way I can improve the content for you all. One final note that Nikita mentioned was that he is hoping and plans to attend GamesCon, where he plans to have a BSG booth and possible arena playtest slash competition. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds hella exciting to me. Well, that pretty much sums up what was discussed in the episode of Tarkov TV. Let me know down in the comments below if I missed anything and what was your favorite part of the episode? That's it for now, y'all. Remember, take care, stay sexy, and until next time.